There's not a single software engineer out there successful in tech, except for they've been through many failures. It's very common for people when they come onto a stage or to introduce themselves to show just the best side. I mean, we're all human. We want to not show our flaws, right? But I think sometimes for us to relate a little bit, we need to understand the flaws of people. And I always try to tell people that I don't know what you guys think of me, but I am not this computer science prodigy. I'm not an expert by no means. I've had my own fair share of failures. For example, one story I often bring up is uh, one time I had an interview with this company, Chick-fil-A. They asked me, uh, the first round interview, oh, reverse a linked list or reverse a string. A very, very simple question that you, you guys probably solve very easily. So I solved that. Round two is where the tricks came in, <laughs> or so I thought. They asked me, so when you type google.com in a browser, what happens? And um, back then, I, <laughs> I didn't really know anything about like, how the internet works. So I was literally like, oh, it accesses your Wi-Fi. You know? It gives you the results. And they're like, so what actually happens? And I was like, oh. Um, it accesses your, your network, goes to outer space, gives you the connection. And they're like, what actually happens? You know? So we all go through our own fair share of failures. For some people, it's going to be interview questions. For some people, it's going to be leak code. For some, maybe international students, it's your battles with uh, the OPT situation, F1 visa, because those are, frankly, just very, very challenging. For other people, it's behavioral interviews. Maybe you just don't mesh well with some people. Maybe you struggle with identifying your strengths or weaknesses. At the end of the day, you are not alone in your struggles. You are not what you call cooked just because you have some struggles. Everyone had their own fair share of struggles, yet we all have to overcome that. On the bright side of this whole tech field is it's not an isolated field, meaning that networking, meeting other people, is literally integrated into the way that we work. I mean, like we have LinkedIn, we have meetups like this, we have career fairs. Everything is based on networking. You know the phrase, it's not what you know, it's who you know? Well, actually, in tech, software engineering, it's actually both. You need to know your stuff, and you need to know your people. Especially in a market like this, I was talking to this ex-Apple, ex-Google recruiter a couple weeks ago, and I straight up asked him, why is it so hard to land an interview in 2024? I mean, like back in 2019, 2020, when I was applying to jobs, I applied to jobs. I usually had referrals. I applied to jobs, and I almost always, or maybe not almost always, but like 50 to 70% of the time, I would get an interview back, or I would get an online assessment at minimum back. What is going on with 2024? And then he sort of told me, AI, AI. It's not just a marketing term, it's actually useful, in that people nowadays use AI tools to quite literally scrape job postings all across the internet and mass apply to them the second they're in released. Like, you know on LinkedIn where you see, like, uh, these many applicants two minutes ago? Like, two, two minutes ago, 56 applicants. Like, how, did, how is that even possible nowadays? Uh, well, it's because of AI. But how do we beat those odds? And so, after talking to him a little more, now it's like networking and referrals is not just a preferred requirement. It's almost a requirement at, at this point. You've you got to have your end there. So that puts a huge emphasis on networking. But a step beyond that is... Whatever projects that you guys are doing, the cool coding projects you're doing, the awesome master's projects that you guys are doing as part of your degree, post those on LinkedIn such that you gain traction and you prove that you are qualified in the skills that you are, and then recruiters will start reaching out to you. Last week, I interviewed someone in New York, uh, this uh, senior, product, or senior technical manager at this one startup, and he said, Every single job that he's had so far has been someone reaching out to him via Twitter because he posts so much on Twitter about the projects that he's working on. Because why do you have to sell yourself if you just show everything that you're doing? Like, what's the point of doing a technical interview if I know exactly what you're doing and that you're a qualified candidate based off the posts that you're making? And so, my encouragement to you all, whatever projects that you're doing, just share it to the world. LinkedIn. Twitter, honestly, I was surprised to see Twitter is actually a big thing in the whole like, tech startup space especially, so you guys should take advantage of that. But at the end of the day, what it all boils down to is sometimes you do need to flex, you need to show off your skills, but it also matters about the connections that you make along the way. Thank you.